The poll question, which you should see on your screen, is to what extent do you agree with the following statement? Governments are su sufficiently prepared for future developments in artificial intelligence. We'll revisit the results of that one later in the session. So to kick things off, we'll start with a brief, brief overview of some early OECD work. Karin from the OECD Secretariat has prepared a short presentation. Karin, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Hamish. Um, uh, and uh, as you mentioned, I'll just say a few words about uh, the emerging OECD work on AI foresight or AI futures, as we're not now calling it. Um, and I do realize I stand between you and our keynote by Stuart Russell, so I will be quick uh, <coughs> because I suspect you want to hear, hear him more than me. <laughs> um, but just to just for the benefit of those who are joining us uh, for joining this workshop just for this session and missed the last session, I want to reiterate how excited and honored we are uh, the OECD is to announce the new OECD.AI expert group on AI futures and its co-chairs, all of whom are here today, uh, Stuart Russell from University of California, Francesca Rossi from IBM, and Michael Schoenstein, uh, who's, who heads the strategic foresight and analysis um, group at the, at, uh, at the German uh, Federal Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs. And the, the goal of this uh, expert group on AI futures is to provide timely insights into the future of AI to equip governments with knowledge, not just governments, but uh, policymakers are the primary, primary audience here, with knowledge and tools to develop forward-looking AI policies. Um, that, that, um, so, so we are very much looking forward to, uh, to this group. Um, so now moving uh, forward to what, what, what we've started to, to work on, um, why explore potential AI futures? Um, so we have we have been focusing on uh, a lot on sort of near term implications and challenges, um, but of AI. But much more attention is needed on its longer term uh, impacts and implications. So 10, 20, 30 years out. Um, although it's harder and complicated, uh, possibly frightening and uh, very disruptive if we're not able to shape it adequately. Um, it is also it is complex because many factors impact AI futures, uh, technological, uh, regulatory, economic, and political factors, uh, some of which we, con we have some control on and some of which we don't. Um, uh, and depending on these, uh, on, these, uh, on these factors, different potential AI futures could materialize. So this means that people and policymakers need to anticipate and act in a coordinated way. Uh, to shape an AI future that benefits people widely um, and help prepare societies for the future, that is, actually shape our preferred futures rather than react to developments, and that's been said uh, uh, before. Um, so next, how do we do that? Um, so we're just starting on this journey, uh, but first we think it's, it's really important to build a knowledge foundation and basically build, uh, stand on the shoulders of giants who have undertaken uh, work on this topic uh, in the past. So our first step is really to explore AI futures by taking stock of research and expert opinions uh, that have already uh, been taken place um, and, and build on what many smart people have done in the past uh, to leverage opportunities and challenge and address challenges. Um, so our focus is really on future AI development milestones, benefits, risks, and solutions or potential solutions um, and there's no shortage of uh, research and expert opinions with uh, as, as, as Hamish mentioned extreme views ranging from AI as the golden age of human prosperity on one side to an existential risk on the other um, and just on the positive side um, you know we we hear uh, that uh, AI and, and, and eventually AGI can be a golden age for humanity help us live longer healthier more fulfilling lives, uh, and that certainly would sounds desirable, and that would want wonderful address complex global challenges like climate change, transform innovation processes across domains, including healthcare and energy. Um, but at the same time, um, there are significant risks that must be considered, um, and that have already been highlighted. I just mentioned a few. Power concentration uh, came up a lot. AI six systems acting on their objectives in ways that are not necessarily aligned with human intent, uh, manipulation at scale, 
uh, disrupted labor markets uh, and the ability of policy to keep up with the pace of technology. Um, so in terms of, uh, there are also theories on what could be done to seize on the benefits while mitigating the risks. I won't get into I won't get into these, uh, including strengthening regulatory capacity, uh, new forms of citizen-driven data ownership, enhanced education, training, and social programs. My personal view, and that's not what I'm being asked to do here, is that we're going to need all of that and probably more. Um, so um, just, just to mention, we've been looking into uh, existing expert forecasts, as I said, for general purpose AI in particular, um, and uh, several recent studies estimate around 2060 as when we see artificial, we could see artificial general intelligence. Uh, in a poll of 67 AI experts, the median uh, participant estimated that computing system would exhibit human level intelligence in 50 years. Um, um, now, um, that was study was in 1972, so we would have seen that last year. So just to say that we're not really sure yet, and that's why we need uh, to look into it some more. Um, so that's what the OECD work uh, in this space aims to do uh, to help us prepare as much as possible for a variety of potential AI futures. So with that, I'll pass it back to you, Hamish. Thank you.